Hello learners, welcome to DLED program. I'm Dr. Vanita Anand and today I'm going to talk about 5E model of lesson planning in EVS. In the words of Davis, nothing is so fatal for a teacher as unpreparedness and I totally believe in that. There can be no big a blunder than going unprepared for any class. So any teacher needs to have lesson planning with her right from the beginning. In fact, even before the lesson begins. What is lesson planning? A lesson plan is a teacher's detailed description of the course of instruction or learning trajectory for a lesson. Whatever the teacher is going to do in the given class has to be mentioned in the lesson plan. It's a step-by-step -step guide that keeps teacher focused and on the track. The teacher knows which step has to come after the previous step and that's why the teacher remains on the track and completely focused. It contains specific definition and direction on learning objectives, instructional material and methods and assessment strategies. First of all, the lesson plan must have learning objectives what objectives the teacher intends to cater to, instructional material and methods that should suit the objectives, and assessment strategies in what way the teacher is going to assess the students. Why plan? The question emerges why this lesson planning is so important. Why do we need a plan? Lesson planning is an important tool for teachers. In fact, lesson planning is something that every teacher needs at every point in the classroom. It provides framework for organized and smooth teaching. As the teacher has already planned, so he or she remains organized and teaching remains smooth throughout. It provides direction to the teacher. As I told you, it keeps the teacher on the track. She knows what steps she is going to follow. Ensures that individual differences are being catered to. There are a number of individual differences that are being operating in the classroom. Some students learn by seeing, others by hearing. Yet there are some which learn the best by doing it. So a lesson plan must have something for everything so that all the individual differences and multiple intelligences are being catered to. It reduces wastage of time as the teacher has an idea of the time frame of the given class. Hence, it ensures that there is no wastage of time. How planning helps? Now, there are a number of ways in which the planning is going to help the teacher. First, path clarity of the work. Planner can help the teacher visualize the entire work schedule and the various steps contained. The teacher has the planning in hand and she knows how she is going to take various steps and how she has to do her work while in the classroom. This way, the teacher can also prepare the entire work and its segments and logical breaks. A lesson plan has lots of segments. There are various steps. From going from one step to another, the teacher needs to have some breaks, which are very, very logical, because the students need to assimilate the knowledge. Like when the teacher is about to ask a question, she needs to give some time before that. Also, when the teacher is using some material aids, again, the break has to be logical. Assumptions. Good planning will provide the opportunity to review the various assumptions that a teacher may have about the implementation of teaching learning process. This will always be useful for achieving the expected results. The teacher has to know how to implement the lesson plan for a fruitful teaching learning process. There are certain objectives that the teacher has to cater to. And these are the results that the teacher is expecting. Only a good lesson plan can result 
in a fruitful endeavor. Futuristic assurance planning will prepare the teacher to plan for various concerns with regard to application and inclusion of technology in the classroom. The teacher must use the latest technology and ICT in the classroom to make it more fruitful for the students as well as for good result towards the end. Now there are certain things that a teacher needs to do before planning. Even before the planning starts, there are certain things that are to be kept in the mind. Know the learners and the learning environment. It is very important for the teacher to have a proper idea of who the learners are and what kind of learning environment he or she needs to have in the classroom because a behavioral approach requires a different kind of classroom, whereas a constructivist approach requires a completely different constructivist environment. Here in 5e lesson plan, we need to have a constructivist environment in the classroom. Consider students' age, needs and interest. What is the age, what are the needs and what are the interests of the students are going to change the entire lesson plan. Each age has different needs and different interests. By knowing for which class the teacher is going to teach, she has to prepare the lesson plan. Teaching method must suit the content. It is very important and applicable in almost every subject of study. For example, there are certain things in EVS which should be taught through storytelling method, whereas there are different content for which different teaching methods, for example, source method, problem solving method, project method, etc., might be required. So, it is very important that a teaching method must suit the content. It must pose challenges to the learners, especially in 5e lesson plan. Since it is inquiry based, it is very important that the learners are challenged, that they, their mind is contained in the lesson, that is, they are always active mentally, there are certain questions that they are answering. Keep the time duration in mind. Since it is 5e lesson plan, it is all the more important for a teacher to know the time duration because in a 5e lesson plan, the teacher tends to make, take more and more times and so does students. So, time duration is very important. A good plan must have alternatives. In the classroom situation, no teacher can always say with certainty as to how the class is going to go. That is why certain alternatives have to be prepared well in advance. 5e lesson plan. As I just told you, it is based on the constructivist model. And as it is constructivist model, so it supports inquiry-based instruction. There is something that the students are trying to find answers of. The students are kept mentally active throughout the lesson plan. Allows children to discover their own knowledge in an engaging way. One, the teacher is not going to give them knowledge, they have to discover their own knowledge. In an engaging way, as I said. Engaging way, they are to be kept engaged, mentally that is. It is very important for the students to be mentally active and that is why it is inquiry based learning. They are trying to find answers to certain problems. It is problem solving, critical thinking. That is, it encourages students to, to use inquiry and critical thinking. At every step, they have number of options. They have to weigh hypotheses. They have to weigh solutions, which is the best, which has to be given up. So, critical thinking is involved throughout. Teacher's role is to guide, mentor and facilitate the process of knowledge construction. Do we mean that teacher doesn't have a role to play in a 5e lesson plan? No, rather the teacher's role is even more important and challenging because the task of the teacher is to guide, mentor and facilitate the process of knowledge construction and that has to go on throughout along with the students. 
Now, what are these five E's we have been talking about since the beginning? The five E's stand for engage, explore, explain, elaborate and evaluate. They correspond to orientation, generation of ideas, restructuring of ideas, application of ideas and reflection. First of all, let us come to engage. What do we mean by engaging the child? Engaging basically means to excite or draw students' attention or curiosity by a number of ways that the teacher has to plan before the lesson begins. This is the beginning of the learning process. Activities that capture the students' attention, stimulate their thinking and help them access prior knowledge. That is, not only the teacher needs to draw students' attention, but also have to give something to the students where, whereby they are mentally active, their thinking is stimulated and they have to access the prior knowledge. That is, what do they already know about the topic and how do they have to plan now? Using smart board technology, videos, illustrations, asking questions, KWL charts, reading a great book, acting out a character or even introducing a game are ways to engage students at the beginning of a lesson. These days, with the use of ICT, there are various technologies that a teacher can utilize to make the lesson engaging. For example, there are smart boards in almost all the classes these days. And if not smart boards, there are PowerPoint presentations, there are overhead projectors in which videos can be shown, questions can be asked, or if not technology, then the role play can also be done or game based learning can also be used to engage students in the beginning of the lesson. Teacher behavior in engage. The teacher needs to motivate the students, create interest, taps into what the students know or think about the topic. That is the teacher must know what is the previous knowledge of the students because in constructivism, it is very important that what the students already know because they have to relate the new knowledge with the previous experiences. Raise questions and encourage responses. That is the task of the teacher to ask questions so that their thinking is stimulated and whatever responses come, the teacher needs to encourage and to ask more of it from the students. Student behavior. The student has to remain attentive in listening. The students have to keep asking questions. These questions only would make the teacher sure that the students are active, mentally that is. Demonstrates interest in the class and it is not just for the purpose of demonstration, the interest has to be there. Responds to questions demonstrating their own entry point of understanding, that is, when the teacher asks questions, how the students respond to those questions give an idea of the entry point of understanding to the teacher. The teacher comes to know of the previous knowledge of the students. Explore. In the explore stage, the teacher has to allow students to explore the concept. Explore stage provides students the time to think, plan, investigate and organize collected information. This is, in fact, the biggest time taker in the entire five E's because this is the time when the students think about the concept, plan as to how they are going to do their research, what field work, what ICT integration they are going to do, how they are going to investigate, how they are going to test the hypothesis that they make and whatever data is collected, this needs to be organized at this phase only. Here. The students can work alone or in the groups. At this phase, mistakes, trial and error also occur and they are allowed because in this process only the students weigh the hypothesis, they make mistakes and they learn from them. Students try to find answers 
to the queries whatever planning they made whatever questions there were in the beginning and whatever hypotheses were made the students try to find answers to all those queries at this phase field trips internet searches original sources can be provided according to their level now this is the responsibility of the teacher to provide these things to the students so as to suit their age need and interests they can be field trips they can be internet researches and they can be original sources teachers behavior at this phase teacher here has to act as a facilitator basically here the teacher has to remain in the background because mostly the students remain active here but the teacher needs to observe and listen to students as they interact the teacher must also keep asking good inquiry oriented questions so that the teacher is certain that the students remain on the task provides time for students to think and to reflect as i just told you this is the time where students mostly remain very very active and as it contains lots of work to do the students basically requires maximum time at this phase here they not only have to think but they have to question their thinking they have to reflect and here students can work in groups thus it encourages cooperative learning student behavior here student conduct maximum activities they predict form hypothesis and make generalization they also become good listeners from time to time as they are working in groups they have to also listen to what inputs the group mates are giving they have to share ideas and suspend judgment in between they have to record observations and generalize based on the observations that they have made at this phase discuss tentative alternatives they have to discuss amongst themselves the various alternatives that come from lots of people as they are working in the group they have to give up some and they have to take up some explain stage at this stage the teacher's role is to facilitate the learning that has taken place in the previous level the teacher asks questions seeks clarification of whatever has been explored by the students whatever has been done in the previous stage the teacher needs clarification as to why they have taken up certain things whereas they have given up certain alternatives or certain hypotheses were discarded the teacher may need to ask what led them to these solutions the students acquire opportunities to connect previous learning and the new experiences this is the gist of a constructivist classroom and 5e lesson plan it is very important for students to be given opportunities where they can connect previous learning with the new experiences students make a conceptual sense of main ideas of the topic they start to make conceptualization of the concept the understanding of the students is clarified and modified because in the previous stage they were basically busy in researching in finalizing but this is the time where their learning is clarified it is strengthened teacher behavior at this stage is the teacher has to encourage students to explain their observations and findings in their own words here the teacher once again becomes active the teacher provides definitions new words and explanations then the teacher listens and builds upon discussion from the students because the students might need more help at this stage they need more guidance they have already done their work now from the discussion the gaps are to be found out and these gaps are to be discussed the teacher ask for clarification and justification the students must know what they have done and why they have reached these solutions the justification they need to give to the teacher accepts all reasonable responses remember reasonable only because once the justifications are discussed clarifications are given then the responses which are left 
are reasonable. Student behavior here is explains whatever the teacher asks, listens whatever is discussed, defines whatever is asked and questions whatever they want to know about. Uses previous observations and findings to answer whatever is being discussed and whatever is being asked. Provides reasonable responses to questions. Now, since they have to give justification to the solutions that they have found, here they have to give responses which are reasonable. They have to give reasons why they reached such solutions. Interact in a positive and supportive manner. Here, they are not just discussing amongst their own group. It is the entire class along with the teacher. And in this interaction, the students need to remain positive and supportive. Elaborate phase. Here, students apply or extend previously introduced concepts and experiences to new situations. Now, it is the responsibility of the teacher to create such situation where the students can apply the knowledge that they have gained. This gives students the opportunity to expand their understanding of the concept because here they are actually applying the knowledge that they have gained and they are applying it in the actual circumstances to see whether the solutions actually occur, whether the solutions actually work. Students apply their knowledge to real world problems. Teacher behavior at this stage is uses previously learned information as a vehicle to enhance additional learning. Here, the learning is enhanced. More things are made known to the students and for that, teacher has to make use of previously learned information. Encourages students to apply or extend the new concepts and skills where in the situations that the teacher creates, the students have to apply whatever knowledge they have gained till now. Encourage students to use new terms and definitions previously acquired. As the terms have already been discussed in the previous stage, now is the time to use them more and more so that they become a part of the students. Student behavior is they need to apply new terms and definitions as we just discussed, uses previous information to probe, ask questions and make reasonable judgments. As here, the learning is being enhanced. This is the final phase of learning. Provides reasonable conclusions and solutions. Records observations, explanations and solutions. Whatever the teacher says, whatever is being discussed in the classroom and what they observe, everything has to be noted down and recorded. The final phase is evaluation. In 5e lesson plan, evaluation is not an isolated incident. It occurs throughout the lesson, right from the beginning, that is the engage phase. Students along with teachers access and review what they have learned and how they have learned it. That is reflection of what they have learned and why they learned it in this manner. What were the various things that led to this kind of learning? That is how they have learned it. Consistent evaluation helps improve learning. As the teacher is evaluating them throughout, hence the feedback and a constructive feedback is being given to the students which improves learning. Rubrics can be used for both formative as well as summative assessment. While the teacher is giving formative feedback, she may take the help of rubrics and a checklist that can help the teacher to know where there are gaps and give the feedback to cater to those gaps. Likewise, towards the end, when summative assessment is taking place, rubrics can again be used. Students at this level can be accessed summatively also towards the end to demonstrate the knowledge that they have acquired. Whatever knowledge has been acquired, there might be a kind of a quiz, a test, a small test or something like that, that whereby the students can be assessed summatively to know how they have increased or where they are from the previous level. Teacher behavior in the evaluate phase is to observe student behavior as they explore 
and apply new concepts and skills. And also how they have acquired those skills. How they are giving up certain hypotheses and how they are taking certain hypotheses for consideration. Accesses students' knowledge and skills because without it, the teacher cannot evaluate. Encourage students to access their own learning, that is, help them self-evaluate and ask open-ended questions so that the students may reply in whatever manner they like and it would give an idea to the teacher about the level of knowledge that they are at present. Student behavior here is to demonstrate an understanding or knowledge of concepts and skills. Evaluate his or her own progress. Answer open-ended questions and provide reasonable responses and explanation to events or phenomena. Premises of 5e lesson plan. There are certain premises on which 5e lesson plan works. The students' previous conceptions influence and shape how they assimilate new information. To gain deep knowledge in any area, the students must understand how the new knowledge relates to the existing knowledge framework. They must then organize knowledge in a way that it can be retrieved and applied. Each phase of 5Es has a specific function that contributes to coherent instruction by teacher and formulation of better understanding of concepts among students. These E's in 5E's are not working separately. They are working together. It is the coherent instruction that is taking place. It is a coherent learning that is taking place. To aid students' construction of knowledge, teachers must use sequence of lessons that are designed to challenge their current conceptions and provide them ample opportunities and time to restructure their knowledge. Steps of 5e lesson plan. Indicator is to be given in the beginning, that is, state the activity, then state outcomes. What outcomes? The concepts that the students would learn from the given activity. Objectives. Here, behavioral objectives are to be given that should cater to each domain. Material. Material should list out all the objects and technology that is needed for the lesson. Then we come to the presentation based on 5 E's. Let us take an example. The title is Sunita in Space, Grade 5, Subject EVS. Context of the lesson. Two children are discussing the shape of the earth. They are enthusiastic about Sunita Williams' visit to their school. The shape of the earth from space and Sunita Williams' experience in the space forms the background of the chapter. Materials access to the internet, newspaper reports, images and pictures, textbook, and globe. There can be a variety of material that can be added to it. Prerequisites. These are to be mentioned in the lesson plan. The students must have an idea of the shape of earth. They must have seen a globe. They may also be aware of the space and life in space. Essential question. What is our Earth really like? Does it look like globe from the space? How was Sunita Williams' experience of living in space? Engage stage. The students in the class are first of all brainstormed about the shape of the Earth. They are allowed to express ideas freely and are also given the opportunity to relate it to how they think the Earth looks from the space, that is, their previous knowledge. The teacher notes down the important points put forward by the students on the board. Explore stage. With the help of the technology, the students are given time to find and explore images, pictures, videos and any related material on how the earth looks from the space and also how was Sunita Williams' life in space. Then divided into small groups and each group is making a presentation based on their research. The teacher will provide necessary direction, ask important questions and ensure that they remain on the task. Explain stage. The groups have one-to-one -one meeting with the teacher to discuss their progress. Normally, 
This section will contain key questions or instruction for requiring the students to provide a summary of what they have learned in the explore section. Elaborate. Prior to presenting the presentation to the class, a peer review will be done to check for errors or to make suggestions to help finalize the presentation. Now, the final presentations will be made. It is the opportunity to present their findings and conclusions to the rest of the class. Evaluate. Now, it is the time to submit the material for evaluation and completing the project or presentation. Although the teacher has been evaluating their work right from the beginning and giving the feedback, now the evaluation leads to the grading of the work. Rubrics here can be very helpful to evaluate the work. In the end, the teacher has to summarize the entire concept and if there are any modifications that the teacher needs are required for the learner's differences, the individual differences that are there in the classroom, then the teacher must make them at this stage. Thank you.